The first person to see a cell uh, with a microscope was a guy named Robert Hooke about 350 years ago. He saw the first cell. And for a long time, uh, scientists thought cells were basically empty, filled with air. They couldn't see anything. The, obviously, the microscopes initially were not that uh, powerful. They couldn't magnify things that large. But uh, they could definitely see the, the outline of the cell. And they thought that, okay, well, there's a cell membrane. And they thought the inside was empty. But of course, we know now that it's not. And over the years, we've learned quite a bit about the, what's on the inside of the cell. And the first thing that's on the inside of the cell, and these are, um, again, a structure that both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells have, and that's the cytoplasm. And the cytoplasm, I think, is often kind of forgotten about how important it is and, and why it's important. Uh, because with really without the cytoplasm, uh, we, we wouldn't work right. The cytoplasm is made in such a way that it allows for the organelles basically to kind of float around and move around inside of the cell. The cytoplasm is a about 70 to 80 percent water. It depends on the particular cell and the organism that the cell's in, but it's mostly water. And so it's very fluid, but it, it's also, it's a little bit thicker than water. So it's kind of like more like a jelly substance because it's got other things in it besides just water molecules. There's protein molecules, carbohydrate molecules, and then of course there's all the organelles that are in it. And all of that stuff in there added together makes the makes the cytoplasm a little bit thicker than water, but it really is very critical not only to the uh, function of the cell, so to allow for the chemical reactions to occur, they all occur in a watery environment, to allow for transportation to occur, but also to provide proper structural support for the cell. Because we often don't think about this, but uh, you've got, uh, there's pressures on the inside and the outside of the cell. So to help the membrane maintain the proper, uh, the proper size, the proper shape of the cell, the cytoplasm on the inside provides some outward force within the cell uh, to counteract any force that's coming from the outside into the cell. So again, to help the cell membrane maintain the proper shape. Next organelle, uh, the next thing we'll look at, the next organelle is the ribosome. And like I mentioned a couple of times, we've got both, uh, uh, both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells contain ribosomes. And the function of the ribosome, as we mentioned yesterday, is to make proteins. And uh, let's look at our figure as I talk about this. And what we can see here, these ribosomes are really are very uh, small, well, compared to other organelles, they're small, but compared to molecules, they're big. But these are big clumps of specialized proteins and enzymes that all kind of clump together so that they're able to make proteins. And what we're seeing here in the diagram on the left, all the little dots in there, those represent the individual uh, ribosomes. And you can see here that there are many ribosomes that are what we call free in the cytoplasm, meaning they're not attached to anything. But if you look right here at about the three o'clock position at this curvy stuff that's got dots on it. Those are ribosomes that are attached to something that we call endoplasmic reticulum. And that's very common. And we'll see pictures of these. And my attempt here for showing these things is that we see them on the diagram, but then we also look at an electron micrograph of them. And that's what we see on the right side. So you can see that I've got a couple of arrows pointing here to these little black dots in the cytoplasm. So that lighter gray stuff is the cytoplasm. And then we've got uh, the arrows pointing to two of the black dots that are ribosomes. But you can see basically there's ribosomes throughout this area. Uh, I just identified a couple of them. And the other thing that I think is really important to do when you're looking at micrographs is to learn how to orient yourself properly to what you're seeing. And what we're looking at here uh, is actually portions of three different cells in this micrograph. So you can see on the left side, I've got cell one marked there, and then you've got that slightly diagonal line coming down. Well, that's actually the barrier, the interface between two different cells. We got the cell membrane of one cell here that I've got marked on the left, the cell membrane of cell two marked on the right. So this is the interface between the two cell membranes. And then if we move all the way over here to cell uh, over in the top right of the diagram, we can see the interface between these other two cells, between cell two and cell three. So it's just in general to help uh, help you orient yourself to the uh, the proper alignment and what you're looking at, I think is is very important. 
The last organelle for today is the nucleus. So we've moved, now realize that we've moved from organelles that both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells share to organelles that only eukaryotic cells have. And so from now on, we're gonna be talking about organelles that only eukaryotic cells have. So the nucleus is a pretty important organelle. I mean, they're all important, but the nucleus has kind of a special, a special importance because it holds the DNA. So the nucleus really is the special covering. It's a membrane bound organelle, which means that it has, uh, it's, uh, it's composed of a membrane, just like we talked about for the cell membrane. But it actually is kind of interesting because it's composed of two of those lipid bilayers. So if you can imagine, uh, it is like four pieces of paper rather than two. Uh, so it's two lipid bilayers on top of each other, uh, creating a sphere. That is uh, the nuclear membrane. And uh, on the inside of that, it's got its own, it's not empty. So it's got stuff in there. It's got plasm in there. So it's filled with nucleoplasm. And nucleoplasm is similar to cytoplasm in that it's mainly water, but it creates this uh, aqueous, this watery environment that's kind of like jelly. So the DNA can have a place to kind of float around and it can have a way to move things throughout the nucleus because the DNA, as the DNA needs to communicate with stuff outside of the cell, it sends messages from it, from the DNA, through the nucleoplasm, out through the nuclear membrane and into the cell. And it can't do that. It can't communicate like this unless the nucleoplasm is watery. And so that is uh, another important feature of the watery environment that we live in and that our cells, uh, that fill our cells and our organelles. So we also see a structure in here called the nucleolus. And the nucleolus makes parts of ribosomes. It makes these things in the nucleus and then they pass out through the nucleus into the cytoplasm and are assembled into full ribosomes. So you might be wondering, you know, I just told you that the DNA needs to communicate so it sends messages out, out of the nucleus. And then I just told you that the nucleolus makes parts of ribosomes. So you might be wondering how do they actually get out since the nucleus itself, the nuclear membrane is a double lipid bilayer. So it's, it's like I said, it's basically like four sheets of lipids right on top of one another. How do, the, how do these things get out? And they get out through holes, uh, special holes in the nucleus called nuclear pores. And that's a real important thing to keep in mind is that the pores let things in and out. Again, they're highly selective, like we saw the with the cell membrane, but these nuclear pores are highly selective, but these are little holes in the membrane that allow stuff to get in and out of the nucleus so the cell can conduct its normal business. If we look over here uh, on the electron micrograph, again, I just wanna point some things out to you. Again, to orient you, we are seeing part of a nucleus there. We've got maybe about, oh, I don't know, about 60% of a nucleus in the picture. And if you look real carefully, you can see the nuclear, the nuclear membrane that bounds that. So that nuclear membrane on the bottom part of our diagram of the micrograph, we've got that kind of gray stuff with the big black blobs in there. That's the inside of the nucleus. So that's nucleoplasm. And then on the outside, uh, we've got the cytoplasm. And within the nucleus, we can see that bigger black blob, that's the nucleolus there. And sometimes cells actually have more than one nucleolus. There's no, no magic number, but cells usually have at least one identifiable nucleolus and sometimes more than that. But that's really what we're looking at here is the nucleolus, that darker blob there, and then the nuclear membrane a little bit on the outside, the interface between the cytoplasm and the nucleoplasm, and then things would be able to get out through that nuclear membrane through nuclear pores.